Hey there, I'm Anna Laurie, and I'm here to pump you up for your required reading list. Get ready to get lit. William Shakespeare? Is that how you say that? I've never heard of him. William Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew is good. How good, you ask? Well, it's been adapted numerous times, and even once with Heath Ledger. Oh God, please tell me you guys know who Heath Ledger is. What's it about? Well, we start out the show with a drunken man named Christopher Sly passed out. A nondescript lord happens upon him and oh, just off the top of his head is like, what if we quickly kidnap this drunk guy and change his clothes and then when he wakes up, we pretend that he is a lord? Cool, lord just had that one in the chamber. Just then, a merry band of players shows up, and the Lord is like, perfect, let's take one of these dudes and dress him up as his wife, because nothing is funnier than a man dressed as a woman! Ha 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 ha! And then we follow the story of Christopher Sly waking up and living out his hilarious new life as a rich guy, right? Wrong. Turns out, S. Hakespeare pulled a fast one, and the Lord, Christopher Sly, and all the servants sit down to watch a play. And guess what play it is? So we leave Dinner for Schmucks, the prologue, and come over to The Taming of the Shrew, which starts out with a dude named Lucentio, who has been traveling around with his friend Tranio. Lucentio and Tranio come into Padua, and Lucentio sees this chick named Bianca, and he is like, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. But it turns out that Bianca can't get married off until her sister Katerina gets married off. And there's just one problem. Katerina is awesome. Well, I think she's awesome, but her quick wit and hatred of men gets her all kinds of bad nicknames in Shakespeare town, most of which have to do with livestock, cool, but the main one is Catherine the Cursed, hashtag so chill. Anyway, Katerina won't stop threatening to hit men with stools and poke their eyes out, so no one really wants to get into an LTR with her. Meanwhile, Bianca is in high demand. There's Lucentio, hot and young, but also two weird old dudes named Hortensio and Gremio who want her. So, like most Shakespeare plays, everyone makes a plan, and all of the plans involve disguises. Lucentio's plan is to dress up like a school teacher and get on Bianca's good side. Meanwhile, Hortensio and Gremio make a bet. First one to find a suitor for Katerina can have Bianca's hand in marriage. Well, lucky old Hortensio, his pal Petruchio shows up, and Petruchio loves money, which Katerina's dad has got. So he's DTF. Easter eggs. In the prologue, Christopher Sly says he was a bear herd at one point. A bear herd is the keeper of a performing bear. He had a circus bear. The Taming of the Shrew is kind of the OG rom-com, and Petruchio and Katerina's banter is some of the best. At one point, Katerina wants to stay at a banquet, and she tells Petruchio, if you love me, you'll stay. Petruchio takes one look at her and replies, Grumio, my horse. <laughs> When they're fighting in Act 2, Scene 1, Petruchio says to her, Who knows not where a wasp does wear his sting? In his tail. In his tongue. Whose tongue? Yours, if you talk of tails, and so farewell. With my tongue in your tail? Nay, come again, good Kate, I am a gentleman. Tongue in tail? Is Shakespeare talking about eating the booty like groceries? And finally, you're gonna love this. When Petruchio is chastising the other men for being intimidated by Katerina, he calls them fear boys. Did Shakespeare invent fuck boys? I don't know about you guys, but I'm changing my Tinder profile to no fear boys need apply. Cringe city. The entire plot of the play revolves around breaking a woman so that she's a nice, docile wife, which is so, so horrible. But, this is one of Shakespeare's funniest plays. Katerina is such a wild and spirited character who takes no shit and can handle herself that it's funny to see her matched with an equally strong-willed man. I don't think I would change anything about this play. I wouldn't reverse the roles, and I might not even change some of the stuff he puts her through. However, the last scene is definitely the worst, and we could totally do without it. Katerina has this final, really weird Stockholm Syndrome monologue, which seems out of character even if she has been a little tamed. 
Wrapping it up. If you have a hard time understanding Shakespearean language, you might want to get something like the Royal Shakespeare Company's Complete Works, which translates all the weird phrases. Trust me, it will greatly enrich your Shakespeareans. There are so many sweet poems in his works that you really don't want to miss a chance to add them all to your repertoire. Like this video and share it with your friends and classmates. If there's anything on your required reading list that you're dreading, let us know in the comments below so we can tackle it for you. If you want to keep getting lit, subscribe to Snarled.